Welcome back to our series where we explore Quezon City in the Philippines. So this is our first day in Grass Residence after landing. You can see we have a nice view of the pool area. And here's our two bedroom, two bathroom Airbnb unit. We're taking a grab here to SM North Edsa. It's only around 400, 500 meters to the entrance, but we're also going to the other side of the mall. So that's closer to a kilometer. You can take either a tricycle, as you can see in front of us, it can only fit around two people. You can also take a grab as we're doing right now, or you could walk. What we're seeing here is kind of the front of the SM North Edsa. There is a bus area, a bus terminal where you can get dropped off or get picked up to go somewhere. There's also a light rail station just across the road, I believe. And then of course there's the regular road here. So there's multiple ways to get to the mall. We're getting dropped off near the park inn. It's uh, one of the nicer hotels in the area if you plan to stay near SM North Edsa. We stayed there last year and it's nice because it's attached to the mall. So you can see this is the area of the mall next to the hotel. There's a, a lot of restaurants. There's a milk tea place. So if you're looking for food, there's plenty of that just next to the hotel. Slimmer's World is a gym here. I was checking out last year. It's actually pretty nice in terms of the equipment. They have all these standard bumper plates and uh, squat racks and things like that. Uh, it was a bit expensive though and I wasn't staying there for long enough. But there are deals with you know most of the gyms in SM North Edsa. They are giving around a week for around 100-ish USD. So if you need a workout, it's a good option. We were actually here early in the morning for a massage. And so we were killing some time before the massage by looking for a gift for my cousins. Since last year, they actually opened up this Muji. So it's one of the large tenants here, it takes up quite a lot of space on the second floor. And besides the retail space, it also has this cafe here. If you haven't been to a Muji cafe, besides things like coffee, uh, matcha lattes, they have bread, they have Japanese curry, and a few household things as well. The cafe is a nice place on this east side of the mall. However, I'd say the prices were a little bit higher since Muji is seen as a premium brand compared to local options in the Philippines. An appointment here at the Mandara Spa. It's our go-to spa whenever we come to SM North Edsa. I'd say it's nice because it's clean. They give you these snacks and, um, and also tea before your massage and also after your massage as well. And they have the foot bath. Not every place has the foot bath. Uh, generally, the accommodations are really nice and clean. So if you're looking for a good massage, I'd say Mandara has a, the nice kind of environment as well as provides a consistent massage from our experience. After the massage, we went to the Aristocrat restaurant. It is a place we went to last year as well. And I'd say it has a good menu of barbecue, especially barbecued chicken. And it's a staple in the Philippines as far as that dish. It also has holo holo, which we went with for dessert. You can see some of the menu options here. They have a lot of the staples like uh, Pancit Canton, which is kind of like noodles. Then they have the barbecue chicken. 
And then they also have some of the pork dishes and beef dishes as well. Here's the holo holo we had, which is made out of crushed ice, evaporated or coconut milk, various ingredients such as ube jam, ice cream, Sweden beans. It's uh, quite a staple of uh, Filipino cuisine. After that, we went back to the Muji, so we're checking out various parts of the store for gifts for my relatives. If you don't know, Muji has a lot of options, so from clothing, household stuff, um, luggage even, so there's quite a lot to choose from, and usually things are of pretty good quality up here. Here's the luggage. It has the branded Muji luggage. I found its quality okay upon inspection, but the prices were really high to uh, justify that. Maybe it's you know better quality once you use it. I'd say it had a nice design aesthetic, kind of like that simple design that Muji's known for. So if you're looking for that, it might be a good option. We were taking a look at the household goods section and thought we could get uh, candles or household scents. But surprisingly, they had sold out of the scent swabs to actually use the uh, household scents. And it seems it was a popular gift because they had plenty of, of the uh, scents left, but just no sticks to actually use it in the house. So that was a shame. Here you can see we're trying some of the uh, fragrances and the sticks there, uh, they're sold out surprisingly. So uh, yeah, it seems like it's a go-to gift if you're ever at a Muji looking for one. Here's one of the kind of more advanced aromatic dispensers. I'm not sure exactly what to call it, but it makes your house smell good. Uh, it's a little bit more bulky though, um, but it is a convenient option, especially if you want your house to smell a little bit better. We kept looking for gifts at Muji, but you know, after that, it was hard to think of things that we could give that were small and then also that were you know likely to be useful. So we headed outside Muji. Here we're walking along the rest of this part of SM North Edsa. You can see there's a decathlon here. It's also a anchor tenant along with decathlon. There are plenty of restaurants as well to the side here. Uh, they're mostly kind of higher end and sit down places. We ended up coming across this place that sold household uh, candles. So we ended up getting this for a gift instead. This is kind of the central atrium of the mall and you can see they have a giant Christmas tree since it's uh, Christmas time as well as a kind of a theme looks like a train station of some sort and it's for people to take and pose pictures. This hallway leads towards the other side of the mall. You can see there's a pretty cool display here. It forms a tunnel. It wasn't here last year. They also added a Din Tai Fung since I came here uh, before. My mom was pretty keen on that, but you know, in Singapore, we have Din Tai Fung as well, and we had just come from Taiwan, so we weren't as keen on Din Tai Fung for those reasons. But if you want to try that, they do have a location here. Seems pretty popular. They also have a Xiaomi store here on the right side. I have quite a few things from them. So they're a company from China that sells various electronic things. Uh, I have a fan, an air purifier, and also a weight scale. So just household stuff, usually pretty good quality. I'd recommend checking it out. I did have one issue with their uh, TV, but that was after three or four years. So a little bit to be expected. And it was kind of like a lower end model as well. We're out now entering kind of the center part of the mall and it has quite a lot of the stores here. I like Mr. Kebab, it's a, uh, you know, Turkish or Mediterranean place I had a couple times. Uh, I wouldn't say it's the most authentic place, but I found the food, you know, decent enough and also had good portions and it was cheap. So hard to argue with that.
On this side of the mall, there's also more food stores as well as an IMAX theater, a department store, and a grocery store. It might be a little bit difficult to see here, but this is a two-story go-kart track inside the mall. So you can actually drive upstairs with the go-kart. I think it's one of the few go-kart places I've seen here. Um, and it's pretty expensive in Singapore to do. So I was tempted to actually try this out at some point. I don't have my action cam on me, unfortunately, and uh, we didn't get to do it this time, but it's pretty cool that they have a uh, go-kart track in here. So this section on the left side is kind of like the American kind of food places. You'll see Dairy Queen, Krispy Kreme, Cinnabon. These are all, you know, U.S. Uh, restaurants or food places that are really popular. There's also a Sparrow's, which is like a pizza chain. I used to have that all the time as a kid. It's pretty good. And then it they opened up a uh, Shake Shack as well recently, just in the center part of the mall. This place is like a live bar. It was a live bar last year rather, and we have looked into it to host a dinner party. Uh, what's interesting now is it's kind of pivoted into a karaoke bar, so you can get your group of friends and do karaoke. I do know uh, karaoke is decently popular in the Filipino community. We had a few parties growing up where we had the karaoke machine going, so it's, it's popular over here. We're now entering the Annex. It's a separate building, but it's also connected by the Sky Bridge and it's part of SM North Edza. I like this place because it has electronics. On the top three or four levels, it's a huge electronics mall where you can get pretty much anything you want as far as gadgets or computer stuff and games. Came here last year and I was exploring a lot of these stores because they were looking for a Steam Deck. So that's a device, it's a gaming device by Valve. It's kind of like a Nintendo Switch it was in super high demand. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to find it here and it ended up getting it in Singapore. So Singapore is surprising. Despite being a high cost of living country, they're able to import a lot of uh, like foreign or imported goods for cheap. So surprisingly, when I buy stuff in Singapore, it's usually a good price with the exception of TVs compared to the US, which are just for some reason very cheap over there. We were here to meet my cousins for dinner, so we chose this Filipino place called uh, Tres. And you can see what we order here in a second. Uh, the ambience of the restaurant was, you know, okay, uh, but we're really here for the kare kare. So you can see here we have a little bit of the chicken, I like saute with some uh, sauce. Uh, and then we have like a light salad. My girlfriend was kind of sick of some of the heavier foods. Filipino cuisine can be very heavy. We got some fried chicken as well with some potatoes. I'm not 100% sure what this dish was, but it was looking like a vegetable and meat dish. And then of course we had to have some garlic rice as well as some taron, which is like banana, a fried banana and kind of like a fried shell. Uh, it's a sweet dessert. Also pretty iconic, just like a holo holo. After that, we ended up going back to Grass Residence. We can just lounge around in this pool area here. It's nice they have a clubhouse. So you know, if you ever have an option for an Airbnb, I do like the Grass Residence, but I would recommend one of the newer towers like four or five. So we're just getting started on this trip. If you're interested to see more of Kesson City, like and subscribe and we'll have the new videos up soon.